go. Welcome. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Championship Week Video Notebook Day Number. David, wake up. Wake up, David. Uh, 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 uh. Shows on. Shows on. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, what are we? Day number five. five. I think. Yeah. Day number five. Something. Something like that. Uh, I'm your host, Chad Sherwood, joined by David Griggs, live from the Puppet Bunker. John Stalika, live from somewhere that's not the Puppet Bunker. Uh, we had a heck of a day today. We got a lot to yeah. get. Yeah. Right. It, we did. Uh, that, I mean, as you would expect uh, we, that we were going to, but it really was a heck of a day. Um, and uh, while we'll get to a minute, the great success that my team right here, Ryder, had uh, winning their game and advancing to the Metro Atlantic semifinals. Um, not only did Ryder fail, the Metro Atlantic oh, failed. The Metro wait. Atlantic is one big, big fail. I don't know if that'll be a final thought or a rant when we talk about that <laughs> conference, but the Metro Atlantic has failed. It's three years of fail. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, not a good day in the Metro Atlantic for the top seeds. A good day for the bomb seeds. We'll get to that. Let's start with some news and notes, though. Um, let's start with some news and notes outside of the conference tournaments. Um, starting with actually with, with, with a tragic event in, in Central Michigan, where uh, where there was a shooting, probably read about or heard about on the news, um, where what allegedly happened was a student there. Uh, shot, I believe they say his parents in a dis domestic dispute. It was a pretty ugly scene. Uh, yeah. Led to a complete lockdown on the campus. I believe they still haven't caught the kid yet. Uh, the game tonight, Western, to the fact that, the way it affects college basketball is the Western Michigan Central Michigan game that was scheduled for tonight was was canceled, was postponed. We played at Northwood University or Northwood College there in up in Michigan tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, and that will affect a lot of things in the seeding, including whether or not Western Michigan can get a buy into the, into the quarterfinals. So uh, right. they, they are going to play the game. Yeah. And uh, glad that they're able to make it up. I mean, you hate that the tragedy is there, uh, but in, in you almost feel kind of callous saying that you hate that they have to move the game off campus after something a little like that, after something like that has happened. But uh, yeah, it's just a, a rough thing to deal with. We're thinking of everybody at central Michigan. Um, but, from what I read, but from what I read, I think they also have the Mac wrestling championships that are supposed to take place tomorrow, but that's still up in the year, depending on what happens as far as the lockdown. So that's, I think, the other reason why that game got moved off campus and what will be a closed environment that's somewhat similar to, what is it, 2008 in the SEC tournament following the tornado that struck the Georgia Dome. Yeah, it's it's. I, I would imagine that it's a you you get a pass list and it's anybody with a credential or that's on the pass list and that's that they're not selling tickets as I understand. So, 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 so John, who do you like in the one sixty five pound weight category of those wrestling championships? <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, <laughs> oh, this is a wrestling HD. Oh sorry, this is a hoops HD. Wrestling I I HD is later. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, a couple of games outside of conference tournaments also. Uh, Oklahoma got a much-needed home win over Iowa State in dominating fashion. And Rhode Island thought they had Davidson beat and didn't. Uh, Rhodey has not had a good week. Uh, yeah. I still think they're okay, but it was it's just not a good week. Um, and again, Davidson... Uh, you, you know, almost winning at St. Bonaventure the other night and then beating Rhodey tonight. Uh, they certainly need the automatic bid to get in, but is it entirely out of the realm of possibility that they can win that tournament? And if they could, you imagine how good they would be if they actually played a little defense? Uh, just a little bit of defense might be a good idea for them. Yeah, just a little. Yeah. Um, but let's get into the conference tournament action and let's start in the probably one of the most exciting conferences that was in play today and it's going to be coming up with semifinals tomorrow, but let's start in the big 10. It's the major conference that's go ongoing right now. Here it is up on the screen. And we had three thrillers tonight, actually, or today and tonight. Yeah. Uh, Start with that Michigan state, Wisconsin game where, uh, uh, Wisconsin almost took out the number one seed there, David. Yeah, and again, Michigan State, again, as they have very, you know, often throughout the year, looking like a number one seed that will lose in the round of 32, <laughs> um, as, as I tweeted out. But, uh, you know, Michigan State, to their credit, they keep winning. Uh, they've been in all these close games. They haven't looked particularly impressive a lot of the time. But they do keep winning. They get rival Michigan, who boat raced them earlier this year on their home court in the semifinals. So that one should be kind of fun. 
and this other game, I mean, I, we're going to talk about all four, but like, how about Nebraska and the and their big big win earlier in the year over Michigan, looking better and better, and, and kind of a virtual lock here with Tim Miles and company. Uh, I think they iced it today. What the hell? No. Uh, the funny yeah, thing yeah, is, that is the one game in the Big Ten tournament that wasn't decided by single digits. Yeah, yeah which just makes practice. the earlier win look all that more much more impressive. Well, I actually know that that Rutgers Minnesota game was an eleven point win, also. But most of the games have been single digit all the way through so far. Um, in the night cap here, well, the final game of the night, first of all, Rutgers a very game effort by by my school here, uh, right in there with Purdue all the way until the end, right? Uh, really something and show show that there's there's a lot of future here with this Rutgers team. I'm really excited that. Next year, we could maybe even move up to a single-digit seed. So, well, let's not leave it at that. This was, and, and I and I mean this sincerely. Like, what an experience! I guess, for lack of a better word, this was for Rutgers basketball. They haven't really had a whole lot of history recently. There's someone that we don't really talk about much at all on the show, but this week really seemed to charge that fan base. And I know it was in New York, but the the, the contingency of fans that they had there tonight was unlike anything that I'd ever seen outside of a showcase home game where all it really is is looking for one moment. I mean, this was kind of galvanized. And let me ask you this, since this is your team and your school, will this carry over? Is this something that they can build on, or was it just kind of a comment that was exciting for the week and then next week everybody will be on the other things? I think it is. I think it is something you build on. I, I do – I mean, I really think Steve Powell is a coach. I think he's going to do – do really good things here. Um, I th- it's going to take a little more, a couple more years to build this, but things like this here, you know, uh, being this the showcase game of the d- night, pretty much, uh, and and last night and showing you know how exciting this team can be when they get the fans behind them. And I was impressed. I was not expecting that at all uh, to have that kind of a contingency for them to play that hard. And to show up on this stage, and you kind of hate that their next game isn't going to be until November, because man, they had uh, they had some momentum built up. Uh, and John, let me ask you about the other the fu- the other game. It was the early game in the night session. Penn State in a thriller uh, at the the virtual buzzer beater to get by Ohio State. I think there was like two seconds left when when uh, when he hit the shot, but. Uh, great game, exciting game. Penn State has now beaten Ohio State three times this year, and let me th- let me throw this out here: they now have three wins against t- teams that will definitely be in this tournament, but they're all against the same team, Ohio State. Uh, there's people saying that that the Penn State belongs in now. They're saying if they beat Purdue tomorrow, they're a lock no matter what happens in, in the finals. Where where are you? What's your thoughts on this Penn State team and where they stand right now? It was a bit of a strange day for Penn State because apparently the team bus on the way to Madison Square Garden it actually got clipped by a couple times by a driver who actually confronted them just outside of the garden and started yelling at them. Oh, come on, come on. Look what happened to Michigan last night. Somehow the buses. <laughs> no, 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 I don't care about that. Yeah. It would be the dark web conspiracy that's not involving Nebraska, but yeah. – I guess to the point, Penn State, they were about 15 or 20 minutes late as far as warming up, but it didn't seem to affect them too much on the floor and were actually able to score the final five points to at least get the aforementioned third win against Ohio State. It does set the table for them, but they're going to at least need a win against Purdue to really have any hopes as far as going to the tournament, giving what could be happening in other conferences? Um, I don't – I'm going to channel uh, one of the best quotes I heard, or at least in that spirit. I don't think they need to win the Big Ten tournament, but I think if they win their next two, they're in. Yeah, I, 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 th- I agree with you. I think they need two more quality wins of their profile. Yeah, and if I they get those, they should get in. I think if they can be two, two more – yeah, two more wins against tournament caliber teams, they belong in. Uh, you know, and they'll probably make it at that point. <laughs> but, uh, right. This uh, was, I, I think, in reference to the Big 12 tournament years ago, uh, this has been sort of a roaning yeah. joke. Uh, there was a team in the quarter. I, I don't even remember the team. But, uh, and um, 
Joe Lenardi, and again, we all do it. It was just funny to hear him say, I don't think they need to make it all the way to the championship game, but they need to pick up at least two wins. And th- that still makes me laugh. So I don't know if they, they don't need to win it, but they need to pick up at least two more wins, Penn State. Uh, D- David, how about these games tomorrow? The Michigan State, Michigan State, what are you looking forward to? Uh, both of them. I think they're both going to be really good. Penn State, while we just got through saying they do need to win the tournament, well, they're one game away from being in the championship. And uh, the way they're playing now, it wouldn't surprise me if they were able to beat Purdue. Uh, so I'm looking forward to both of them. I mean, you got a rivalry game between uh, a protected seed and a, but it, like if Michigan wins this one, they're they're looking at a really good seed themselves. And then you got another game between another protected seed and the team that's playing for their lives. It's just two really good games. Yeah, I th- I think that Purdue got their test tonight though. I think Purdue's going to come out tomorrow looking really sharp, and I think that I think they're going to roll Penn State in the late game. I think we're going to have a real fun one in the early game though. Yeah. My call on it. Uh, let's take a look at some of the, some of the other conferences that were in the uh, semifinal rounds tonight. We'll start in the South, where we saw uh, a close and pretty good one between Radford and Winthrop that Radford just pulled away late. And then uh, UNC Asheville was just rolling Liberty in the first half. They uh, were. And, uh, and then it all fell apart for Asheville. And it was really surprising. Asheville had been really, really good at home this year in conference play, and they were up big. If you were watching this game, it was an electric atmosphere. And, I mean, to have that much momentum going for them, for it to fall apart like that, and give credit to Liberty, I mean, for being in that situation on the road uh, to come back and be able to win the game. But, you you know, you kind of hate it for Asheville, but uh, you can't say that Liberty didn't earn this win. (laughs) And, John, coming up on Sunday now, the conference is off tomorrow, but coming up on Sunday, uh, Radford will now be hosting this game against Liberty. These two schools are about an hour, hour and a half apart there in, in uh, western, southwestern Virginia. It's a uh, – uh, should be a, an electric, uh, crazy atmosphere, I think. Oh, this. yeah. It was actually the second time this year that uh, Liberty managed to win at Asheville, which is kind of odd considering that Asheville had actually won the league. But certainly Radford, it looked like they were going to be falling off the map in February after losing a share of first place and following, I think, as low as a fourth or fifth place before managing to right their ship. Well, who do you, th- you think Radford wins this one? I do. Okay. I agree with you. I, th- I, I don't know that Liberty can go in there and win at Radford. I, th- I think it's still too much to ask for them. Uh David, the other conference I was in semifinals tonight was the Ohio Valley, which was really not that we, – we've had some great semifinals in the past in the OVC. We did not yeah. have that tonight, though. No, uh, Murray State was way, was blowing Jacksonville State out of the gym. I mean, I think they got up by as much as 20. Jack State came all the way back and tied it. Uh, that's just what Ray Harper does, uh, and that's what Ray Harper's teams do. But they lost. I, I don't understand that – Ray Harper Murray was in the another. semis and he lost. I, I, it just doesn't – it hasn't quite sunk in yet. But Murray, clearly the better team. And then Belmont, Austin P, really good year uh, when you consider how bad they've been in recent years, but just got waxed tonight by Belmont. So the chalk holds. And we should see a good game tomorrow, two kind of contrasting so- styles. Uh, you, you know, Murray State, the athletic team, and then uh, Belmont, the more fundamentally sound and sh- good shooting team. So – It'll be interesting to see what happens in that one. It is, and this will be our first automatic bid that will be won here tomorrow night. Uh, given that I picked Jack State to win this, now that i got to relook at it, I'm going to go Murray State here. Uh, yeah, I am too. Salika? I guess I'm, t- I'm going to go with uh, Belmont here, which would also be the same result back in uh, 2015 when Belmont was seeded number three and had knocked off then number one Murray State. All right. Well, let's go to the conference. Well, the next two conferences we're going to go to are a ton of fun. Let's start with the one we already hinted at at the top of the show here. Uh, the oh. Metro Atlantic, where all hell broke loose today. Uh, there yeah. were only two quarterfinals. The, the whole point of this was give the top two seeds an extra day off in between their quarters and the semis. Well, they're going to have a lot of extra days off, David, because they both lost. <laughs> yeah, and this is – 
the third year in a row that the Metro Atlantic has had a team that was really – and in this case, this year it was two teams. It was both Canisius and Ryder yeah. that, that were really good, that could have really played well in the round of 64 and perhaps even won a game in the round of 64, failed to make the tournament. Earlier in the show we mentioned the Big South – and what a great atmosphere that was. Uh, you know what Radford and Liberty is going to be on Sunday? It's going to be sold out. Uh, regardless of how this bracket plays out, their championship game will not be sold out. Uh, so when you're not drawing crowds, when your atmosphere sucks, and when you're not getting the most deserving teams to the tournament because you're giving them no real advantage, is it time, Chad, for the Metro Atlantic to re-examine how they structure their tournament? Yes, yeah, so they got to move the whole thing to Atlantic City so I can go there. Okay, well, besides that, I would recommend going to campus sites. Uh, it's a bus league anyway. Why not do it? Uh, but but as far as these two games go themselves, uh, both of them, we, we saw the, you know, the uh, well, I mean, this, in the first one with Ryder and St. Peter's, St. Peter's started taking control about midway through the second half and never looked back. But the, the Canisius Quidipiac game was back and forth the whole way. It was actually a really fun game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and- Twitter was blowing up a little bit. Our friends at Mid Major Man, well, I say our friends, they may hate us. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we're talking, they, they've been pushing for conferences to get rid of their tournaments. Um, well, the way it works is each conference, it's sort of, I mean, it's sort of a state's rights thing. They can run their tournament however they want, they can do with their automatic bid whatever they want. And um, all 32 decide to have a tournament. There's a lot of reasons for that. It's a big money maker, And a lot of any sort of television deal that the league gets is normally roped in with the rights to the conference tournament. So without it, they probably wouldn't get regular season games on at all. Uh, and there, there's, you're just never going to be in a situation where a conference will decide to dump its tournament. I, I, not that I can see. Uh, but one of the side effects is this, and, and we see it all every year, is that when you don't do anything to protect your first your first place team, or even in times when you do, the most deserving team doesn't get to go, and it hurts the Metro Atlantic to have a team that is good enough to compete and even win a game that does that isn't the team that's going. What can be done about it other than just getting rid of the tournament and sending the first place team? Uh, you could do a ladder. You could do campus sites. You could even structure it to maybe where you don't take everyone or where. You, you know, the first place team buys all the way into the championship game and plays at home. But they have to do a better job than what they're doing because what they have now is an empty building with the, with their most deserving team being out year after year after year. Well, let's talk about tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow we've got the other two quarterfinals. A couple of fun-looking games here between Niagara Fairfield and one of the best rivalries in the Metro yeah. Iona and Manhattan. So uh, on the court, David, it's still going to be a ton of fun, even if you want to complain about the format. Um, yeah. I-, I think that this is going to be a real fun conference tournament for the rest of the way here. Yeah, and the dozens of people there will have a blast, I'm sure. Well, I'll be watching them sleep. Yeah, You'll oh, be watching, won't yeah. You? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll be watching. Yeah, we'll be watching uh, Tim Kloos make his inevitable run to the tournament for the third straight year. Yeah, we will. I, I, can't, I can't do anything else. i got to pick Iona the rest of the way at this I, point. I, I, how can you not? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Cloosing yeah. used to mean a good team that lost a game they shouldn't have. Now it means finishing in the middle of the conference and winning the tournament. That's what Cloosing <laughs> is going to mean. Uh, let's go over to, to the conference that had an incredible day today in the Missouri Valley. Uh, at least three. I mean, I guess that last game between Illinois State and Indiana State was kind of a little bit okay at the, towards the end. The other three were great games across the yeah. board here. Loyola fighting off a very tough Northern Iowa team. Uh, Bradley getting the win over Drake. Southern Illinois, uh, Barry Henson winning the battle and getting the win over Missouri State, David. Yeah, so we've got an all Illinois semifinal here. Did you did you pick up on that? Did you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Barry Henson who who gave another spectacular interview uh, at halftime today. <laughs> um you, you know, big win for them. I but yeah, to your point, all four games were exciting. Uh in Loyola, we have them under consideration. I don't think the committee will take them if they don't win it, but if it, it, they at least have a chance, no one else does. So, like we see so often, uh, these teams are playing for their tournament lives. But we also had an exciting moment as far as uh, Bradley and uh, Drake goes where 
more often than not, the most dangerous pass seems to be a missed shot on the offensive end. And <laughs> Bradley did capitalize with about 1.1 seconds, but Drake damn near came close to hitting a half court three. They but did. Oh, the man. Yeah. Their season, regular season comes to an end. Yeah. And, and but Barry Henson does live on, and and we got we got we got to see him one more time, David, don't we? Yeah, we do. All right, uh, here he is. Oh wait, hold on a second. We got to get some sound on there too, don't we? Let's yeah. try that again, got folks. Uh, Barry Henson attempt number two. Maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. We're, 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 we're such high quality here. Yeah. Howdy, folks. There's two things that get me excited: Saluki victories and barbecue. Boy, do I have a deal for you, Barry Henson's Barbecue Sauce. This year at all Saluki Athletic Events, we're going to sell this barbecue sauce and all the proceeds go to academics for our athletes. You can put this on meat, and if you don't like meat, well, shoot, drizzle it on your cauliflower. Barry Henson's Barbecue Sauce. If this ain't the best barbecue sauce you ever had, well, I reckon you're a liar. I think if you go back to a Chad screen on there, I think my favorite video was, they didn't pay my ass when I was here, but they sure did when I returned. Yes. Yeah, well, when he when he went back to Missouri State for the first time, yeah. Well, well, well he won. He's got to keep going tomorrow. He's got Illinois State coming up, and we got the Barry Heads of Barbecue Sauce. Yeah. David, <laughs> yes. where, where, where's the cauliflower? Do we have anything today? I don't, like, I don't know. I haven't gotten my food delivered to the bunker yet. Well, hell. <laughs> That's the best dang barbecue sauce I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Here's an advice: don't, don't take shots of barbecue sauce. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I hope that that was fake. But uh, <laughs> um, wow. Uh, Where are we? Let's go back to the screen here. How's that? Yeah. Um, tomorrow's semifinals: John Loyola, Chicago, Bradley, Southern Illinois, Illinois State. What are you What are you looking forward to? I'm looking for a little more chalk tomorrow as far as Loyola and SIU going on, but I can certainly see, uh, what is it, Bradley giving Loyola another bit of a, a rough stretch here. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's move over to the Horizon League where we had first-round games. Uh, Green Bay beating Detroit and, and Cleveland State holding off Youngstown State. Youngstown State missing two fairly close shots at the buzzer to let Cleveland State escape there, David. Yeah, and um, I guess the good news is that at least they don't have to play Northern Kentucky, who they probably wouldn't have beaten. But, man, that one's gonna, that's going to take a while to knock off because Youngstown had, as you said, two chances to hit a game-winning shot and, and went 0 for 2. Uh, tomorrow, there's just two of the quarterfinals, the Cleveland State, Northern Kentucky, and the Green Bay Wright State. Well, it happened in the Metro Atlantic that, that you know, that these early quarterfinals with the top two seeds fell. Uh, Sleeka, you want to predict that the top two seeds fall in the horizon also? I doubt Lightning is going to be able to strike twice, especially with the uh, rope a play that uh, Youngstown State had last year to beat Oakland, which was quite exciting. But I still think Green Bay – they certainly have a shot of knocking off Wright State, but I don't see NKU losing tomorrow. Yeah, I, I agree with Stalika. Only I, I hope that Green Bay doesn't because I picked Wright State to win this, and I want to be right. Uh, it was also first round day in the SoCon today, where we saw the Citadel take care of VMI and uh, Chattanooga in a mild upset over Samford here, David. Yeah, Sanford really disappointing year this year. Uh, somebody that we were with, that we liked a lot coming into the season, and why wouldn't you? They had a strong finish to the previous year, and they had most of their contributing players back. Uh, and Chattanooga again, it was just a, 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 another disappointing game against the Chattanooga team that you would have, you would have expected them to beat. So, but we get the East Tennessee State Chattanooga game. That was going to be fun. Yeah, it's a little slightly regional rivalry there of Eastern Tennessee schools. Um, UNC Greensboro Citadel, Mercer Wofford, Furman, Western Carolina. Sleeka, what are you looking for tomorrow in those all four quarterfinals there tomorrow? I think uh, in uh, Xavier Nation, we'll all be pulling for uh, former uh, Musketeer McKinney London as it relates to uh, Chattanooga, who had a couple nice plays himself during the game against Sanford tonight. But 
I would probably say, again, if we're looking for a likely upset, I'll go Western Carolina. Uh, I don't know. I, David, I kind of like this Furman team. I think they can make a run in this tournament. Uh, I think they can, too. Um, I, I, I want to see, as much as I just railed on the Metro Atlantic, I want to see the improbable, the impossible. I want the Citadel to win this tournament. They have they gave Greensboro a tough game during the regular season. They they yeah. have, they picked up a lot of key wins late. Uh, noon tomorrow, tune into that one. We could have that big upset. Oh, wouldn't that be if they get? Oh God, that would be incredible. That would be the college basketball story of the year, maybe unless unless Savannah State wins their tournament. Uh, uh, circle that Mercer Wofford game also. That should be a fun one. Two very evenly matched teams here. I think. Yeah. Uh, Last conference I was in action was the West Coast Conference. Uh, there we go. We finally do have the score on the screen there. Uh, Pepperdine. The last D1 conference, at least. Last yeah. D1 conference, thank you. Uh, Pepperdine in the late game just blew out Santa Clara. Loyola Marymount actually fell down big early to Portland, then came storming back and ran away with the game from there on. It really wasn't even that close to six points, I don't think. Right, yeah. Uh, but tomorrow – we have the all four quarterfinals. David, what are you, what are you looking forward to here, to here? First of all, uh, we could just skip the, the 1-8 and the 210 games, but what about the other two games maybe? <laughs> uh, uh, San Diego-BYU is going to be interesting. San Diego has looked good at times, played well at times, but uh, you, you know they've, they've kind of had their own drama to deal with lately. So. <laughs> but I guess if I'm if there's one game outside if there's one game on the slate tomorrow that I'm looking forward to the most it's that one. Yeah, I, I'd agree with you. I, I just don't think we're going to see much in terms of competitive games here in the West Coast Conference tomorrow night. Um, mm -hmm. A few conferences that are in action tomorrow that were not in action today include we are returning to action in the Northeast Conference. It's it is semifinal day starting at noon with. LIU Brooklyn hosting Fairleigh Dickinson, followed by Robert Morris host uh, going to Wagner. Uh, David, forget about the Big Ten tournament being in uh, Madison Square Garden. We got two of the other boroughs covered here with with uh, with Staten Island and Brooklyn. Right, and now that uh, Nebraska's out, I think this is clearly the uh, the focal point of the city. This is this is. Um, the big tournament, both games in New York, in New York, uh, back to back on, uh, even though they're on different home courts. So should be fun. It, 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 and in all seriousness, I, I bet the atmosphere at these games is, is a lot more fun than at Madison square garden. And certainly worth the price of the ticket. Well, John, you, you predicted Robert Morris and Fairleigh Dickinson to pull up sets in the first round. You want to predict it again in the, in the semifinals now? I'll pick a fairly Dickinson to make it to the title game, but again, I'm not going to see lightning striking twice as far as uh, Wagner goes, especially given their heartbreaking loss to STFU in the same round last year. I don't know. You never go against Robert Morris in this tournament. That's my rule. I didn't follow it in the first round, but I, I may I may take Robert Morris to pull the upset again. Good old Bobby Moe. Uh, uh, and let me say, so you see that we have ESPN3 on the screen here. Game also available on NEC front row. Is that right, Chad? Yes. Okay, and, and the reason that's important is because if your subscription, if you have direct TV like I do, you're limited to how many streams you can have going at once. So uh, you might need the NEC front row to free up another ESPN stream. All right. For those of you that have 15 screens like David does, that's the way to watch the games. Yeah. Uh, we are kicking things off tomorrow night it, in the Summit League with the first two oh, oh, quarterfinals. Oh, 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 just two of them. The South oh. Dakota State Western Illinois and the Denver I'm sorry, and the South Dakota Omaha games are tomorrow. The other two games will be coming up on Sunday. But uh, David, first time first timing championship week to get a look at Mike Dahlman, that South Dakota State team. Yeah, uh, this one, this should be a fun tournament. I don't think Western Illinois will be able to make the game interesting, much less uh, pull the upset. But once we get past the quarters of this tournament, it should be a lot of fun. Or even once we get past the one eight two seven games, it should be pretty good. Uh, well, Dave, David, who do you think wins this tournament? South Dakota State. It's in South Dakota. Uh, what I want, I want the chalk to hold so we get the South Dakota, South Dakota State Championship game in South Dakota. That was a really fun game last year. Both games were, were a lot of fun this year. There's a little bit of heat to that, and 
you put them on a floor in a stakes game like that, it, it should be fun. And the other thing about it is this South Dakota State team, not inside the bubble, but uh, they could really make it interesting in the round of 64 if they were to win this. John, what do you think? Do you agree with him on the pick? And do you see any an upset in either one of the two games tomorrow? We'll also uh, take the Jackrabbits, but certainly don't see uh, South Dakota losing either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you. I think South Dakota State wins this wins this event. Um, I mean, having to face North Dakota State potentially the semifinals is always dangerous. That North Dakota yeah. State team always seems a way to find find a way to win games in this conference tournament too. So yeah. not going to be an easy road there by any means. Right. Uh, also kicking things off tomorrow in the America East, it is quarterfinal day. Uh, yeah, on campus and look play. who's hosting games, Hartford and UMBC. And Albany and Vermont. Well, yeah, but that's not Andrew. That's not. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have Maine at Vermont, a real fun game here, a fun rivalry the last few years here, Stony Brook at Albany, uh, Lowell yeah. at UMBC. In New Hampshire's at Hartford. Uh, David, any upsets that you're predicting tomorrow? Um, if, if there's going to be one, I think it's going to be Hartford at New Hampshire. The Stony Brook Albany game is going to be fun, but if Stony Brook were to pull it off, how much of an upset is that really? Um, I do not foresee Maine beating Vermont. <laughs> Neither do I. Uh, and I think UMBC will take care of Lowell, too. Uh, yeah. John, who do you think wins this event? Is, is this just give it to Vermont, or is there any chance that they get upset here? I think there's a chance that UMBC could be competitive, but I'm probably going to say uh, Vermont will uh, win the whole thing. But I'll agree with the puppet in that we probably will see New Hampshire at least uh, pull off a win tomorrow. And they do recede in this tournament. So if that happens, we have a likely New Hampshire Vermont semifinal. So mm -hmm. uh, one more conference kicking things off tomorrow. First round day in the Colonial. Uh, Drexel versus James Madison and Delaware versus Elon. Uh, David, how about Elon after looking like that's a life for early this season, finishing dead last? Uh, yeah, that is almost unbelievable. That uh, that they that they finished last. I'm looking forward to this tournament. I can't say that I'm excited about the opening round, uh, but Drexel James Madison uh, could be at least an interesting game. It was sort of interesting the last time we saw these two teams play. Was it? And, 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 well, that was a Drexel Delaware game, but but James sorry, Madison yeah. ha has had a lot of uh, um, really close games this this year, and I think that's going to be a fun game. Yeah. Uh, the tournament itself, it is being played in Charleston. I'm going with, with the one seed here, College of Charleston. I am too. Um, if I, I, but, uh, but I'll say it like this. If I had to pick the field or Charleston, I'd take the field. But if I could only pick one team, I'm picking Charleston. Uh, Salika? Yep, it's, we are changing things up a little bit this year, pushing the tournament back a day so at least we can accommodate CBS Sports Network carrying both the uh, semifinals on Monday and Tuesday so it'll be a chance to see uh, Charleston on TV for both days inevitably winning this tournament inevitably wow he doesn't even give mm -hmm. Bill and Mary or Towson a, a shot here uh, right. not, not, now James Mass is going to knock them off in the quarterfinals uh, right yeah so uh, one more conference we want to discuss D2 the Pac West <laughs> tournament the team of the people Cal Baptist a commanding 10-point win over Azusa Pacific tonight uh, and a battle tomorrow at 7.30 Eastern against Dixie State for the automatic bid out of the Pac West here. Yeah, a little bit of hardware. Now, it's not the only hardware they're going to win, but it is some hardware. And, and you want to collect it because they're not going to be back at D2 anymore. So, I mean, they want to tr savor every trophy on, you, you know, this one – the regional championship trophy and the national championship trophy. Namely, walk off with the trophy WWE style. Yeah. Well, well, either one of these teams, I mean, should somehow crazily Dixie State be Cal Baptist. Uh, Dixie State on their way out of the Pac West after this year as well over to the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. So uh, there's a little piece of D2 news and notes that uh, – I came up with today, but uh, okay, both these teams, yeah. their final Pac West game ever tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, Cal Baptist, though, on their way to the WAC next season. Yep. Let's go ahead and pull that down here. And what what's up next? 
uh, survival board? Yeah, I think we got to get to the survival board. It was a busy day, so a lot of teams coming off. Well, uh, David, why don't you tell us what the survival board thing is about? Well, it, it, again, this is everyone that's still playing that can still win the national championship. We started off with about 345, 346, I think it was. Maybe it was 344. And it's everyone that is still either playing for a con in a conference tournament or could mathematically qualify for their conference tournament. And a lot of conferences, that's all the teams because the vast majority take them all anyway. But, uh, it, again, it's everybody that's still playing and therefore surviving. Now, there are four categories here. Uh, there is the automatic bid winner. Those are the champions. Those will be in bold in all caps. We don't have anybody yet, but we'll have one tomorrow. There's the locks. This means you can lose in your conference tournament, but the selection committee will take them anyway. This is, again, a tool the selection committee uses. They have the internet in the room. They can log on to this site and find out immediately what they need to be doing. It's just that easy. So the bold teams are the teams that even if they don't win the automatic bid, the committee's going to take them. The italics teams are teams the committee needs to think about. Maybe you take them, maybe you don't. It's, it's up for debate. And the teams that aren't in italics, they just need to win their conference tournament to get in. So based on Chad's trivia question the other night, I guess Duke is finally going to get their first ever NCAA tournament appearance. Is that but, but, right? Don't get me started correct. on that stupid uh, um, trivia. Uh, at, coming into the day day, we were at 299 teams remaining. Yeah. As a result of today's games, we are down to 280. 280 teams left that could potentially win the NCAA tournament. Yep. Uh, David, let's scroll down. Take a look at the Big Ten, for example. Ohio State lost today. They're yeah, in bold. So they're in the tournament no matter what. They're in the tournament no matter what. Uh, Nebraska and Penn State still in italics. So, well, Penn State's still playing, but Nebraska, the loss today, but you would think they're going to get in because, um, well, why wouldn't they? <laughs> we're leaving them in Itasa, so, so the committee, we're going to give the committee permission to discuss Nebraska in the room. Their resume is now complete. And we did not take them off the board. Uh, look, look one line above them, the Big South, Liberty and Radford, two teams left. One yeah. of them Sunday will disappear. The other one will go into all bold and all caps and will be right. in. So uh, as soon as we remove the other one, they don't even think about, well, is, you know, Liberty, Radford, are they 15 seeds? Are they 14 seeds? Well, right, yeah. only one team to think about uh, come, right. come Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, on that note, let's go ahead and pull that down. And what else do we have to do, David? Well, oh, you want to have a bunker, don't you? Yes. Out of the bunker. Okay. Chad, well, these trivia questions are full of crap. Like I, I've gotten them, I've gotten every single answer right, and yet you say that I'm wrong. John, John uh, we have a contest here. We've decided to, Dave, to give David a chance to get out of the puppet bunker. All he has to do is correctly answer. Correctly, I, I've answer been correctly answering every we single question. question. He's got to be able to tell us the answer that's in the envelope here, which is the correct answer. And John, you can help out with these answers because I know you haven't seen them either. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, and, and this one may play into in, play a little bit into some games that are being played tomorrow. It may not. Let's see here. What two conference rival schools are lo located only eight miles apart and yet have never met in the NCAA tournament? Well, I mean, you hear about this all the time. It's, you know, anybody that watches college basketball knows this. It's Duke and North Carolina. They mention it about 50 times during the week of the game, and then another 50 during the game. It's Duke and North Carolina. You want, you want to hit John to help you because you've been wrong the last couple of nights? There's ago. no way it's not Duke and North Carolina. John, John who is it? John's not answering. Okay. But uh, I know what. Duke and North Carolina, that's your final answer then, huh? Yes, that's the correct okay. answer. Just let me out of here. All right. Okay, two conference rivals, eight miles apart, never met in the NCAA tournament. The answer is, there it is, Chicago State and Cal State Bakersfield. There are not even two. There, there's eight different time zones between they those schools. What the the They've never met in the NCAA tournament, David. They're only eight miles apart. What compass That's are you game. using? Well, to be fair, that is a bit of an open-ended question because I would have answered Lafayette and Lehigh. They're 17 miles apart. They're not eight miles. Up. The, the, one's in Chicago. The other one's in Bakersfield, California. Do I just get a map up for you, David? There's a direct road there. It goes from Chicago to Bakersfield. It takes eight miles to get along it, eight miles to drive along it. 
It was in the envelope. It's the answer. It's I'm not sorry, the answer. David. Whoever's putting these answers in the envelope is a complete and total moron. Another day in the puppet bunker. I'm sorry. Try again tomorrow. Uh, on that note, let's go to any final thoughts. John, let me let you start off. Start this off. A pillow, a mattress, bed. That's my final thought for tonight. That's why he couldn't help you with the answer. He was asleep already. David? <laughs> um, well, I, I just to reiterate, uh, if you're an under-the-radar conference, play the tournament at campus sites. Gee whiz. Uh, or play them in Atlantic City in my backyard, either way. Right. But uh, on that note, on behalf of John Sleeko, who's already sound asleep, and David Griggs, who is rather irate, uh, I'm Chad Sherwood. We will be back again tomorrow night with trivia another video notebook. Trivia questions are stupid. Where do you find these trivia questions? Well, I'll double check them for you again for tomorrow, David. But I think that was the right answer. Chicago State, Cal State, Bakersfield. Uh, have a good night, everybody. <laughs>